Omanga, Ains raised his head as the sound of the horn reached him from the direction of the village. The area around him was covered with the corpses of the knights who had been standing guard here. The stink of blood hung heavy in the air, but Ains paid it no heed as here in his experiments. Just then, he chided himself for getting his priorities wrong. Ains cast down the sword in his hand. The sword which had originally belonged to a knight fell to the ground, its gleaming, razor-sharp edge now stained with dirt. Well, I've said it before, but this physical damage reduction is quite something. Ains Ulgaun-sama. Ains will do, Albedo. Ains' request to be called by a truncated version of his name threw Albedo into confusion. Ku, Kufo. Am, am I really allowed to do that? Would it not be disrespectful to shorten the name of the leader of the 41 supreme beings, especially if it is also the name of Nazarek's rulers? Ains did not think that it was a big deal. However, her words meant that she respected the name of Ain Zolgaon, which pleased Ains. Therefore, his reply was phrased in a gentle tone, It's fine, Albedo. Until my former comrades arrive, that is my name. I permit you to shorten it. I understand, no, but please let me address you with the appropriate respect. Then, then, my master, Aain Sama, Kakoka, yes, that's right. Albedo twisted her body shyly. However, since she was in full body armor, Ains could not see her beautiful face. To him, she was just acting strangely. Could, could it be, Kakoka, could it be that I'm the only one who's allowed to address you in such a way? No. Having someone address me by such a long name all the time would be annoying, so I would like to have everyone do the same thing. Is that so? That's right. Yes, that's what I thought. Albedo's mood turned gloomy all of a sudden. In an uneasy voice, Ains asked, Albedo, what do you think of the name I chose? I think that name suits you very well. It fits my beloved, cough, cough, it fits you, in your capacity as the one who united the supreme beings. This name was intended to represent the 41 of us, and this includes your maker, Tabulus Maragdinasan. However, I ignored the feelings of your master and the others, and took that name for myself on a whim. How do you think they would feel about that? Although, I fear to anger you. I pray you will allow me to speak. If my words displease you, then I will gladly take my own life if you command it. I feel that some of the supreme beings who abandoned us might object to that name being used by the one who stayed with us until now, Mamanga-sama. However, they are not here, so if you wish to use that name, all I feel is happiness, Mamanga-sama. Albedo lowered her head after she finished speaking, and Ains remained silent. The phrase, abandoned us, swirled in his mind like a vortex. His past companions had left him for their own reasons. Yggdrasil was just a game, and they could not abandon their real lives for a game. Mamanga felt the same way too. Yet could it really be said that he, who had been fixated on Ain Zolgaon and the great underground tomb of Nazarek, had not been suppressing his anger toward his former comrades? They abandoned me. That might be so but it might not be. Human emotions are a complicated matter, and there is no right answer. Raise your head, Albedo. I understand your feelings. All right, it's decided. This shall be my name. Until my comrades object, I shall be Ain Zolgaon. Understood. The thought that our most exalted master, and the man I love most would bear this glorious name fills me with joy. The man I love most. Ah. The uneasy Ains decided not to worry about this for now. Is that so? I'm glad to hear that. Then, Ain Sama, would you like to spend some time here? Although I would be happy to stand by Ain Sama's side, I, right, a stroll through the woods would be fine too. He could not do that. Ains had come to save this village. The parents that his sisters had asked him to save were already dead. As he thought of their corpses, he scratched his head. The sight of their bodies reminded him of a dead insect by the roadside. There was no pity, no sadness, no anger. Um, well, a stroll might be all right. After all, there is nothing of importance to do. The Death Knight seems quite happy to do his job, as expected of an undead being that Ain Sama made. His marvelous execution of his duties is truly praiseworthy. The undead made by Ain's magic and his skills were stronger than ordinary monsters of their kind due to Ain's class skills. Naturally, the same applied to the Death Knight he had just created. However, it was only a level 35 monster, and it was nothing in comparison to the monsters which required XP to create, like Overlord Wiseman and Grim Reaper Thanatos. The fact that it was still fighting until now meant that the enemies were weak. In other words, there was no danger. 
He wanted to jump for joy when he thought about it, but he had to okay the role of the dignified master, so Ains quashed that thought. However, he clenched his fists tightly under his robe. The enemies who attacked the village were too weak. Then, let us go check on the survivors. Before Mamanga set out, he realized that he had some things to do first. To begin with, he deactivated the special effects of the staff of Ain Zulgaon. The malevolent aura which wreathed it vanished like a candle flame in the wind. Next, he withdrew a full face mask from his inventory. It was gaudily decorated, and its expression was hard to describe, being somewhere between crying and anger. It resembled a Balinese barong mask. The mask looked creepy, but it had no special powers. It was a simple cosmetic item which did not contain a trace of data. Only those who were logged on to Yggdrasil for more than two hours, between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Christmas Eve, would possess this mask. No, as long as they were in the game during that period of time, they would automatically receive it. It could be called a cursed item. This mask was known as the Mask of the Jealous or the Jealous Mask. Once, when he wore this mask, he was flooded by messages. Has the company gone mad? We've been waiting for this. Nobody in our guild has it. Can I PK him? I'm done with being a human being and other such things in a certain large message board. Then, he took out a pair of gloves. Their rough exterior betrayed the fact that they were crudely made and had no special properties. These gloves were called Jarn Grape, and they were an armor item made by one of Ain Zulgaon's members for fun. Their only ability was to increase the wearer's strength. He used these items to hide his skeletal appearance. Naturally, there was a reason for this emergency camouflage. It was because Ains realized he had made a fatal mistake. Ains was used to Yggdrasil, and looking like a skeleton did not frighten him. However, to the people of this world, Ains' appearance was synonymous with terror. Both the sisters who had nearly lost their lives and the fully armored knights were afraid of him. For the time being, he would use magic items to change his appearance from a dreadful monster to menacing magic caster. That ought to reduce how frightening he appeared. Then, he thought about the staff. In the end, he decided to keep it with him. Besides, it was not a problem for him. Rather than beg your god for aid, you should not have massacred these people in the first place. With that line which only an atheist could come up with, Ains looked away from the corpse, whose fingers were folded into a gesture of prayer, and cast a spell. Fly! Ains floated lightly into the sky, albedo soon followed him shortly afterwards. Death Knight, if there are any surviving knights, leave them alive. They are useful to me. The Death Knight sent its acknowledgement of Ains will back through the mental link they shared. It was difficult to put the distant Death Knight's thoughts into words. Ains flew toward the place from whence the horn blast had come as quickly as he could. The wind lashed at his body because he had never flown this fast before in Yggdrasil. The robe plastered to his body felt a little uncomfortable, but that passed swiftly. He soon reached the sky above the village, and Ains looked down on the landscape beneath him. Ains discovered that part of the village square was darkened, as though it had absorbed water. There were many corpses and a few trembling knights, as well as the death knight. Ains counted the panting knights, who were too tired even to move. There were four of them in total. Though there were more than he expected, a few extra would not be a problem. Death, knight. That will be all for now. His words seemed strangely incongruous with the surroundings, like he were buying something at a store. But to Ains, this situation was as casual as going shopping. He slowly descended to the ground, accompanied by Albedo. The false knights stared at Ains with mouths agape. They had been hoping for a rescue, but what had come was the man responsible for everything, and his arrival shattered their hopes. Greetings, gentlemen. My name is Ains Olgaon. Nobody answered. If you throw down your arms, I can guarantee your lives. Of course, if you would rather fight, one sword was cast to the ground. It was shortly followed by the other swords being thrown down until there were four blades on the ground. Nobody spoke during this time. You seem quite tired. Although, don't you think your heads are held a bit too high before the master of the death knight? The knights immediately prostrated themselves before him without a single sound. They did not look like vassals before their lord so much as convicts awaiting execution. I will permit you to leave with your lives. In exchange, tell your master, your owner, this. Ains used the effects of the fly spell to move near one of the knights, and then he removed his helmet with the hand that was not holding the staff of Ains' gown. He noted the man's exhausted eyes, 
and their gazes met through the mask. Do not make trouble around here. If you make a disturbance here, I will slay you with the rest of your country. The trembling knight nodded as hard as he could. His frantic gesture looked quite comical. Get lost, and make sure to relay this to your master. He jerked his chin, and the knights fled like rabbits. Ah, the sack is tiring, Mamanga quietly grumbled as he watched the knights run away. If there were no villagers around, he might even have stretched his shoulders. Although he was doing the same thing in the great underground tomb of Nazarick, playing the role of a dignified person was very tiring for an average salaryman like Haynes. Yet, until the curtains closed on the sack of his, he had to wear yet another mask. Haynes resisted the urge to sigh and walked toward the villagers. Albedo followed behind him, her every step accompanied by the clanking of metal. Clear up your zombie slaves, Ains ordered the death knight. As Ains drew closer to them, he could more clearly see the confusion and unease on the villagers' faces. It was not that they were not happy at being rescued from the knights, but frightened by the person before them. Ains finally realized this. He was powerful, much more so than those knights, so he did not consider this situation from a weak person's point of view. He decided to reflect on this, and pondered it quietly. If he went too close to them, the outcome would be the opposite of what he was hoping for. Therefore, Ains decided to stop at a distance from them, and spoke in a kindly tone. You have been saved. Be at ease. You, you are. One of the villagers was saying that, but even in the middle of speaking to Ains, his eyes never left the death knight. I saw someone attacking this village, so I came here, to help. Oh. As the noises spilled out, looks of relief dawned, on the faces of the villagers. Even so, they could not be completely at ease. What a pain. Should I try a different approach? Ains decided to handle this in a way he did not like much. That said, this was not for free. I expect a reward, commensurate with the number of villagers whom I saved. The villagers looked at each other. It would seem that they were worried about money. However, their doubtful looks faded away. This crass demand for money in exchange for salvation seemed to have allayed their suspicions somewhat. With, with the village in its present state. Ains raised his hand to silence the other man before continuing. We'll discuss that later. I rescued a pair of sisters before I came here. I will go bring them over now. Can you wait here for me? He had to make sure those sisters did not talk and give away his true identity. Without waiting for them to reply, Ains slowly headed off. At the same time, he thought about using magic to alter memories.